Hello beautiful perception trainers people, welcome back to another video. So in the last video we were talking about how trying to get rid of our ego. And when we say that and what we really mean is I'm trying to get rid of all these parts of myself that I think are bad and wrong and that are causing me all my pain and are the reason that my life is shitty is a way that we are re-traumatizing ourselves. It's a way that we are continuing to reject the parts of ourselves that are immature and need to grow and need love to do that. It's a way that we're rejecting the authentic parts of ourselves that were rejected by society, were rejected by our caregivers, that keep us trapped in trauma. And it's a way of rejecting, or you know, trying to become what we aren't, things that are not actually genuine to us, because we were told by our caregivers and the world and society that this is who we had to be. And as we continue to do that, we're just traumatizing ourselves. We're just keeping ourselves stuck in this paradigm of it's not safe for me to be me, it's not safe for me to, to live as my real self. And if I do live as my real self, I'm going to die. And that it's programmed into our nervous systems. That being our real selves is going to equal death. Because we experience that rejection and that abandonment from our parents, from our caregivers, in our early childhood when we were completely dependent upon them for survival and therefore completely dependent upon their approval and love for survival. So we're stuck in this paradigm of I need to be accepted by the world. I need to be accepted by those around me. I need to be loved. I need to be understood. I need to be accepted in order to be safe, in order to be provided for, in order to have enough. And we're constantly trapped in this trap of trying to be what our caregivers wanted us to be, trying to be what we learned in our, in our youth, what society expects us to be, because to us, and our nervous systems, that's what's required to survive. So we're trying to get rid of these parts of ourselves that aren't a part of that. We're trying to become things that aren't necessarily who we really are. And we're stunting our growth. We're not allowing ourselves to learn from the pain and pleasure of real reality. Because we're trying to memorize rules and do things right without learning experientially. We're not learning what it feels like to hit another child. We're just learning that we got yelled at when we hit another child and that felt bad and that was wrong. But you don't know why it feels bad to hit another kid other than it gets me rejected. But that's not really learning. Because if you were to actually let yourself hit another kid and then experience what it feels like to see the pain on that kid's face, to feel what it feels like to hurt somebody, you would experientially learn that that doesn't feel good. And then you would not want to do it anymore. And this is the thing, is that we really, again, as a society, do not trust reality to teach us. We do not trust that we can learn from our experiences, from our pain and pleasure. And again, because of our learning traumas and learning that learning is wrong and being wrong is wrong and making a mistake is wrong and this makes you unworthy of love, right? Snake eating its own tail. We don't know how to learn. We are, we're cutting ourselves off from being able to learn from reality because to us, making mistake equals rejection. That's programmed into our nervous system that we're gonna die. So we can't do that. We can't learn from reality. We can't have pain. Pain is bad. Pain is bad. Pain is bad. We have to get rid of it. It means we're doing something wrong. And if I'm doing something wrong, I'm gonna get rejected. And if I get rejected, I'm gonna die. So none of us have an experience with our pain. We don't know how to go into our pain, not make it mean that we're terrible, not make it mean that there's something fundamentally wrong with us, but instead just, okay, I'm doing something out of alignment with how reality works. That's okay. We all do that. We all make mistakes, right? We all literally make choices to go down paths that cause us pain. When we thought we had the awareness to go down a path that could have led to our pleasure, but we did the pain thing, and now we don't know how to get out of it because we're blaming ourselves and we're victimizing ourselves and we're constantly telling ourselves that I shouldn't have done that and what was wrong with me and I should have just done the other path and okay, I'm just gonna get on the other path, let's do this. Rah, 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 rah. And then we can't do it and we wonder why. Because we're in trauma. We're in fear. We're in nervous system shutdown, which is just now getting us to do what we've always done over and over again. We can't do anything different because we're in trauma. We're in nervous system programming. Pain is bad, I am bad, therefore I'm going to be rejected, therefore I'm going to die, so just do what I've always done. Don't do anything different. You can't change. 
So as much as we try and change, as much as we try and do something different, as much as we can logically see what I'm doing is hurting me, we can't do anything different because that's our nervous system now taking over and telling us, just do this over and over. Just do this because this is how you survived. So this is why I say self-love is the key to first being able to learn and grow and expand these parts of ourselves that we think are our ego, that we have to get rid of, that are causing us pain, that of course look like they're causing us pain. They are the parts of us that are addicted. They're the parts of us that are self-sabotaging. They're the parts of us that are doing to us what we think is bad and wrong. They're the parts of us that are choosing the wrong relationship over and over again, choosing the same job over and over again, doing all this. But we're going to love them into safety so we can learn from them. And we're going to love ourselves into safety that I'm in pain right now, but that doesn't mean I'm wrong and bad. That doesn't mean I'm fundamentally unworthy of love. That doesn't mean that I am no longer worthy of feeling acceptance and like I'm going to be provided for and cared for. Right? We're in this childlike state where I'm doing something wrong and love is going to go away and therefore provision is going to go away so I just need to do whatever it takes to be approved of again. And we get on these self-help things where you think you're going to improve yourself into whatever you think you need to be and that's your hope that ma gets you all amped up but you can't actually do it or you feel completely depressed and alone and like, oh my God, I'm going to die because I can't be what everyone wants me to be. I can't do it. I can't fix it. And then we get depressed. So that's that paradigm. Now with that, I want to also address that with separation consciousness, with us feeling like we are individuals, having this 3D experience of being an individuated consciousness with a bunch of seemingly other individuated consciousnesses that are separate from us. We're in our body, they're in their body, we're not the same. Sorry if you can hear the guy whistling in the, in the hallway. I'm glad he's having a good time. Um, just feeling this separation. I want to fully um, acknowledge and validate that that experience can be, and for most of us is, incredibly traumatizing for a couple of reasons. Number one, anything that hurts isn't true. So this feeling that we are separate, that because we are an individuated consciousness, this means we are not connected. We are not also operating in an overarching truth of unity consciousness. That belief system hurts because it's not true. But most of us don't have an experience of feeling anything but alone when we're by ourselves. So a lot of the time, and again, this now comes back to this childhood trauma, that most of the time, humans on this planet have been traumatized from somewhere between one and seven years old. And we're stuck in that state. So th again, this is where you're coping, your, your self-sabotage, your scapegoats, your addictions, your anxieties, your depressions, your fears, all of these things that are just the, these looping problems in your life. This is really a part of you that's stuck somewhere between one and seven years old where you were growing, you were learning, you were changing, you were starting to understand reality, you were starting to awaken to needs that you had that were more complex than the needs of a baby. You were starting to awaken to desires that you had, awaken to parts of yourself that were starting to come to the surface and you got rejected, you got abandoned, you got shamed, you got blamed and that part of yourself got stunted there. So your consciousness didn't grow into the adult that you are right now. You didn't expand and continue to mature and actually grow up. Take those parts of yourself that wanted to hit the child and la hit the child, learn from it, grow from it, expand from it, become an adult you who is complex enough to understand sharing and cooperation and how that actually works better and how you can get your needs met within a complicated society 
No, that part of you got trapped in. I want the thing. My instinct is to hit because I'm a two-year-old. I don't understand other people, others' emotions. This is something I'm supposed to grow into right now. But I'm not allowed to do that. All I know is I get shamed and abandoned and, and rejected when I hit them. I still want to hit them. I still want to be aggressive because I don't understand why that's not a thing because I didn't get to learn from reality. But I know that that's bad and wrong. So I'm constantly policing myself and trying to get rid of this part of my ego that's now aggressive. That's because that two-year-old part of you didn't get to grow up. It's still two years old. So you have this kind of adult part of you that knows what the answer is, that grew up, that learned the rules, that can play by the rules. But then there's this authentic two-year-old part of you that still just all they know is when I want something, I'm going to get aggressive to get it. And then you either shame yourself and blame yourself and you become aggressive inside. Maybe you're not aggressive outside, but you're aggressive inside. You're mean to yourself. You scold yourself. Your nervous system kicks in every time you want something that somebody else has, and you don't ever get to like hitting someone else. You just automatically go into shame and guilt and self-sabotage and shutting yourself down. Maybe this literally causes you to drink or to binge or to watch Netflix. It's your desire for something that somebody else has that you don't know how to get. Triggering you that that's wrong and bad because that's going to make me hit them and that's going to get me rejected. So I need to stop this by, I'm going to drink. This is the cascade. I'm going to drink to shut myself down. And so then if you were to actually start to integrate this ego, actually accept this ego part of you, you might discover you want to hit people. You're aggressive. And that's a part of you that needs to be grown now. It needs to be loved. It needs to be brought into the light. You're not going to discover, most of us, when we go on our spiritual journeys, we're not going to go inside and find our higher self. We're going to go inside and we're going to find all these wounded, shadowed, immature parts of self that didn't get to grow. That's what we're going to find. The pain, the suffering, the anguish, the anxiety, the I don't know what to do, the I don't know how to handle this, the I want to do something bad but I can't do that, the nervous system that's going crazy. That's what we're all going to discover when we go inside. Because again, we got stunted. We didn't get the love we needed. And in this, one of the biggest things is that we all never learned, we never grew past I'm a separate person, you're a separate person, and I'm alone if I don't have someone outside of me loving me and taking care of me. So we have the, these childlike perspectives that we're constantly being triggered into in life. When we're in anxiety, when we're in depression, when we're in cyclical thoughts of worrying about something that there's something we can't do anything about. We're worrying about death, we're worrying about our health, we're worrying about our body weight, we're worrying about our job, we're worrying about our relationship, and it's just like the cyclical worry thing that we're constantly OCDing about. But we never seem to be able to do anything about it. Yes? All of these parts of ourselves. That's how we're coping with the fact that we're stunted. We feel separate, we feel alone, and we feel like a child. So this is why when people ask me, like, when I go to love myself, why doesn't it feel as good? to love myself as it feels to have someone else love me? Why doesn't it feel actually good to go inside and be with myself? Why don't I feel connected? Why don't I feel one with everyone? I just feel alone and I feel scared and I feel bad and I feel um, like I'm fundamentally bad and I'm fundamentally wrong. This is the ego paradigm we actually do want to transcend. And that is that we are isolated little children who are alone and abandoned and rejected. That's really what we're feeling when we go inside. We don't feel like the capable 20, 30, 40, 50 year old who's an adult who can problem solve, who can get our needs met, who can figure things out. And for most of us, we aren't really that. Not really. We're acting like that 
we're doing what society tells us is how we problem solve. We're going to the doctor, we're listening to this expert, we're doing this, we're doing that. We look like we're doing everything right, we're trying really hard, but we have these addictions, we have these scapegoats, we have these coping mechanisms, we have these negative emotions, these cyclical thoughts, these cyclical fears, these problems we can't actually solve. And that's because we're trapped in our child consciousness that says, I'm not capable, I don't know what this is, and I got rejected, I got re abandoned, and this is bad, and I'm alone. So we're feeling completely isolated. We're feeling like I am just this child who is cut off and separate from everyone else. And I need someone to come and rescue me. I need someone else to love me. I need someone to come and show me the answer. I need to be validated by somebody else. I need somebody else to come and be with me because I'm alone and I'm separate and I'm a child. That's really what we're feeling when we feel alone and disconnected. And I want to tell you about when I was a kid that I obviously felt this way too, especially I, was, I grew up in a household where I was not very, um, I, I grew up being very much rejected by pretty much everyone around me. My friends didn't really like me and didn't really want to hang out with me and my, my caregivers, same thing. Like I spent a lot of time alone and I spent a lot of time being just really alone and feeling really alone. And I just, I remember that, that feeling of isolation and that feeling of disconnection and that feeling of being alone when I was with myself. And I was actually a physical child at this point, but still, same, same rules apply, whether you're a physical child or you're emotionally, mentally stuck in that childlike state. If you, anything that I'm saying resonates with you, that when you feel alone, when you feel like you have a problem you don't know how to solve, you're constantly addicted, whatever, but if you, if you kind of slow down, you just feel like you're alone and you don't have the answer and there's nothing else there and you couldn't possibly figure it out because it's just you and you're fucked. I get that. That's the childlike perspective. I don't know how to fix this. Anything I could do to try to fix this is also wrong. I don't know how to learn. I'm not allowed to learn. These parts of me are bad. I just need someone to rescue me. I just need someone to come. And so then this leads us to wanting, a, always needing a partner or always needing to be surrounded by friends or feeling like we need more community or being alone is the worst thing we could possibly have and we develop all these narcissistic codependent relationships because again we just don't want to be alone we don't want to be by ourselves we feel again like every time we have something wrong with us we go to consensus reality to tell us what to do because we don't know what to do we don't know how to be with ourselves we don't want to be with our pain we don't want to be with our feelings because we feel like a child and how is that helpful so I, like I said, I was like that as a child. I completely understand this feeling of being completely alone when you're alone. And for me, I went through this whole big phase in my, in my childhood of this becoming desperate for God, basically. I, I kind of just learned early that my mom wasn't gonna do it, my dad wasn't gonna do it, that I wasn't gonna find friends, I wasn't going to get a boyfriend. I really didn't think that anyone was ever going to love me. I, I just kind of got to this helpless, hopeless place of like, and then getting sick when I was really young, just being very sick for a very long time and going to doctors and naturopaths and healers and all these people and just never finding answers. Um, it just got me to a place, like I said, where I, I very much came to like, if, I w if I'm not going to figure this out by myself, then it's not going to get figured out. I'm going to just be alone. And, and rather than giving up, I instinctually went to, I need to connect with something higher than myself. There has to be something bigger than me that has the answers, that can help me, that can give to me something. And what I would call that now is an ego death that led me to being able to experience unity consciousness. And, and this is the other thing too, is that I personally know that like I'm an empath. So my capacity to feel connected to other people was something that I actually needed to develop boundaries with. Because 
my natural state is to not really be in my individuated consciousness at all. Which is to say, again, I tend the other way to feel radically connected to everyone, to feel like there is no separation between me and everyone else. And that's been my experience. So I've definitely experienced this. I'm connected to everyone else and no one else knows what they're doing. I feel completely connected to everyone and all I feel is everyone's anxiety and everyone's depression and everyone, nobody knows what the fuck they're doing. Looking around my church and being like, what the heck? Like no one is solving their problems. Like this is a big issue that feeling connected to other people doesn't help me solve. And so I kind of, like I say, I learned that early because I was so deeply connected to everyone. I am so deeply connected to everyone. I'm having that experience. So again, it's really funny when I hear people say that they want to have a unity consciousness experience. Often what I say to that is, no, <laughs> you want a unity consciousness experience in a dimension when we all understand ourselves and we're all in alignment with ourselves and everyone's learning, growing, changing, evolving, expanding and having a great ex experience. Because right now, a unity consciousness experience with what's going on on the planet is essentially just feeling bombarded by everyone's anxiety and depression and self-hate and self-loathing and fear and confusion. So just to give you that is like, if you feel like an individuated consciousness who can't feel connected to everyone else, you're not missing much. It's, it's not exactly a fun experience to be in a unity consciousness state on the planet at this time. Okay. I'm just going to put that out there. But the second thing is, like I said, I had unity consciousness in that I was connected to all the humans, but what I knew I was missing was this connection to something bigger and right. We all do this connection to something bigger, something higher. We feel like it's coming from outside and I'm not here to argue about that right now. Okay. I, I'm not here to f philosophize about what that is. If we're just connecting to ourselves, if we're connecting, if it's literally as simple as becoming an adult and becoming your own source of answers and figuring things out and learning and growing, or if we're really connected to God, a thing that's like off planet, whatever, it doesn't matter. The bottom line was I went through a period of time in my life where, like I say, I allowed myself to have an experience of, and I think really what this was is giving myself permission to bring my whole self, all my fears, all my anxieties, all my desires, all my secret, what I would not reveal to anyone else, parts of myself to at the time. Okay. So I'm just going to tell you my personal story with this. Jesus, right? I was raised Christian and for some reason I got it in my head that Jesus was this all loving, all compassionate, completely available at all times presence that I could bring everything to and that he would give me unconditional love. So for some reason I had, I over and over again gave myself permission inside my own head to bring my full self to this consciousness of unconditional love. And in so doing, these parts of myself matured, they grew up. And I'm telling you this because again, this is everything that I preach, this unconditional self love, this unconditional approval for what you are right now, being the answer to feeling that we are connected to something higher or greater than ourselves, to feeling like we can solve our own problems, to growing these parts of ourselves so that we can learn from pain and pleasure. Even though society is telling us pain means you're making a mistake and making a mistake is wrong and bad and you're disappointing people and you can't be this and you can't do this. I've lived my life walking my own path, having a completely different experience, more I'm learning than most people because I very early on in my life tapped into 
bringing my full self to an unconditionally loving presence and allowing those parts of myself to be grown, evolved, and expanded and watching as that matured me. So these traumatized parts of myself, these parts of myself that were stuck in childhood, that were children at this time, matured. So I actually matured into an adult self who could learn how to navigate my body. This really, 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 really sick, really, 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 really genetically not okay body that I have. So again, I was not given a fine body and then I just ruined it with an eating disorder when I was 16. Like that is not what happened to me. I went into a stress-induced menopause at 15 years old. Like two years before veganism, four years before the eating disorder. Th this body that I have, I probably should be dead right now, but I'm not. And I'm thriving in ways that people with my genetics don't because I matured myself. I'm a problem solver. I live a life that I live where I feel completely connected to God at all times. And I think that this is something that I know that I lose track with when I'm talking with people. That I don't remember what it feels like to feel like going into my inner world, it's just me in there. And I'm just a child. And I don't know what to do. And I need someone to help me. Because I have been practicing this unconditional self-love presence that has grown who and what I am, which has connected me more and more to reality itself to answers, to pain and pleasure and all these things, but also something greater than that. That it's not just this experiential experience. Like I am not afraid to die because I know myself experientially as more than just Aaliyah in this body. But again, no one convinced me of this. No one told me about this. This isn't a story for me. This is an experience. So bringing this back to the ego death thing. When people are seeking to get rid of their individuated perspective because they know they want to step into a perspective where they can feel that they are connected to something greater than themselves, where they feel oneness, where you stop feeling like an isolated individual self, that is truth, right? Where we're getting confused is saying that I need to get rid of the individual perspective in order to have a unity consciousness experience, to not feel alone, to feel connected. It's either one or the other. I'm either in my ego, my individuated self, or I'm in my unity consciousness experience where I feel connected to everyone and God. But I can't have both at the same time, right? It's this idea that it is the ego experience that's blocking us from having the God experience. So what I want to say of that, about that is that we want to evolve this understanding. So the understanding that just having this individuated micro, I am just me um, experience and perspective is painful. Absolutely. So the ego paradigm of we have to get rid of our ego so that we can experience God, I understand that. That's a part of it. But what I want to say is that it's not about getting rid of your individual perspective so that you can feel God. I never got rid of my individual perspective in order to feel God. And I'm, therefore, I'm not constantly in this battle of being my individuated self, being one with everything, and I, my ego doesn't exist. It's just an illusion. And then I have to eat. So it knocks me out of consciousness, unity consciousness. And I have to provide for myself. I have to make money. I have to interact with other humans who are not me. I have to get on the bus. It is constantly breaking me out of my, in, my universal, universal experience. Because these two things cannot coexist. Because it is me that is blocking me from God. That's the paradigm we want to evolve. The real true path is understanding that it is by being you. 
in an unconditional love experience. That you will be able to be an ego that operates within unity consciousness. Meaning, I can live in a state where I fully understand that everything that I do affects everyone else. I fully feel connected to everyone around me and I feel connected to God at the same time as being myself, wanting to express myself, wanting to expand myself. I can hold all of these perspectives at once because they're not separate. That ego paradigm of I need to die to myself to become oneness. It's not going to happen because you are always going to be a self so long as you're here on the planet. You are always going to have to eat. You're always going to have to wear clothes. And everything that you do, you're forced to make a choice that says something about you. right? Even if you choose to become a monk who is unidentifiable from all the other monks, you've made a choice to be a monk. You've individuated. You've made a choice that's different from what most people have made. That's an ego thing. I have no identity is an identity, is a choice. You're still going to go to a restaurant and eat food, and you're going to have to make a choice. And that choice says something about you as an individual. Even if you choose, I'm just going to eat gruel. I'm just going to eat what's offered to me. I'm just going to eat. That's all choices. That's all individual. So if in your mind, being an individual means you can't experience consciousness, unity consciousness, God consciousness, you're always going to be in pain. You're always going to be suffering. But yes, we do have to allow ourselves an experience of transcending, for a lack of a better word, our individuated consciousness to feel connected to something greater. And then we want to integrate that so that you can understand that it is the self through which you are having a unity experience. It is through you that you are connecting to God. So what I always talk about is that this boils down to self-love. Letting yourself bring unconditional loving presence to every part of yourself that's in pain. To every part of yourself that feels completely alone and separate and isolated from everyone else and everything else. And if that requires that you imagine for a little while a loving parent coming to these lonely, scared parts of you and having that parent just validate them and love them and accept them and tell them that everything is going to be okay and I'm going to save you and I'm going to rescue you and it's okay and you're not wrong and you're not bad. Do it. If you need to imagine Jesus, if you need to imagine the angels, if you need to imagine God, whatever it is that you need to connect with, that feels like it's coming to the parts of you that feel completely alone and isolated, a perfect partner, whatever you think is going to give you permission to feel good enough, I want you to understand that that's really what you're seeking. You're not seeking an ego death. You're not seeking getting rid of yourself. You're seeking unconditional love where you feel like no matter what you do, you're going to be okay. And that's the unity experience. That's the God experience. That I see myself as one with God and therefore I cannot make mistakes. I can't do it wrong. I can be completely destroying myself and completely going against reality and completely making only choices that make my life miserable and hurt everyone around me and I'm still worthy of love and feeling good. And we start to understand that all of our pain is not necessarily even coming from the fact that we're out of alignment and that we're doing the wrong thing and that we're causing ourselves pain and that we're in a destructive space. That's not even what's causing us our pain. The pain isn't the problem. It's that we feel that if we're in pain, we're doing the wrong thing, we're destroying ourselves, we're unworthy of love, we're cut off. And the only way I'm going to be able to experience that love that I actually want is to be in alignment, to be perfect. And that's a rule we've made for ourselves. And I can say that if you can start to understand that, no, if you can start to bring unconditional curiosity to what you are right now, you will start to be able to feel 
oneness with everything, that love, that acceptance, that you're okay in the mess. And that's what's going to decompress your nervous system. That's what's going to give you the, the ability to learn from how reality works because this reality is just cause and effect. You're not being punished and you're not being blessed. You're reaping the rewards or your, the consequences of your actions. And so many of your actions, a lot of it too, right? We have to talk about epigenetics. We have to talk about stuff we've been handed. We have to talk about the belief systems and the patriarchy and racism and all of these systems that are at play that aren't necessarily our choice. The consequences that we're reaping that, right? You didn't choose your body. You didn't choose your skin color and all the systems that come with that. You didn't choose all that. But we are all feeling the effects of collectively what we are doing that is out of alignment with truth. And what we have control over is ourselves. What we are going to do within the systems. How we are going to liberate ourselves. What we are going to stand for. What we aren't going to stand for. And that's all going to come from unconditionally loving yourself in your pain and in your confusion and in what you don't know. And letting yourself die to the idea that these things cut you, self, cut you off from love, cut you off from safety, cut you off from provision, that you are that child who is stuck needing the external world to give something to you. You start to let yourself feel that unconditional love for where and what you are right now, the suffering you're in, the pain that you're in, the confusion that you're in. And we're all so afraid to do this because we think if I love myself for where I am right now, I'm not going to do anything to improve myself and then I'm going to be stuck in this forever. But again, that's because you feel like in this you're not worthy of love. What you really want is love. So if you give yourself love right now, you're not going to stay stuck in what you're in. It's a snake eating its tail. But again, I can't force anyone to do this. You have to have an experience for yourself. It, it's an experience of letting yourself feel that unconditional love for who and what you are right now. That blasts this whole thing open. That's the real ego death. And then the next thing is there is ego death of allowing yourself to die to the identities that are your conditioning. And that's also where the ego paradigm gets things right. That a lot of us have these ideas of who we need to be and who we're not allowed to be from our conditioning that as we experience this unconditional love, these parts are going to come up and it, right? We're going to think maybe if I just love myself enough, I'll finally be good enough at this job. When really you love yourself enough and you just realize I don't want to do this job. This is what I think I have to do. This is who I think I have to be. And I'm never going to want to do it. I'm always going to have to cope and self like, right? You, you start to recognize my alcoholism is because I hate my job, but I feel like I have to go to my job. And the only way to get through it is to cope. You're going to discover I can't do this job. This is not who I am. This is what my parents wanted me to be. This is what my society wanted me to be. This is what gets me external love, but it's not who I am. And the more we love ourselves from within, the more we allow that loving presence to saturate us, the braver we will be to step into who we really are. And like I say, I live a very radical life where I'm not doing any of the things that my parents wanted me to do, <laughs> that society wants me to do. I don't look how I'm supposed to look. I don't act how I'm supposed to act. I don't live how I'm supposed to live in any way. I'm living my life, my guidance. And I'm alive because of that. And no, no one really understands it. I don't expect people to understand because I'm living connected. And that's part of it. It's, so what the ego paradigm gets right is that we do have to step outside of I am alone and I am by myself, but they are not getting it right for how to do that. It's not about getting rid of yourself. It's about bringing these pained, unaware, immature parts of your child self to a loving presence so that they can grow. So then you can start to let go of the things that aren't you, start to embrace the things that are you and heal. And that is exactly what my mystery school is all about. So if you want more tools and help with this, that's exactly what we're doing in the mystery school. I'm making a curriculum. I'm laying this all out exactly from step one to step 1000. But you don't need a program for it either. If you can just start to learn to bring unconditional presence, presence to every part of yourself, you will have an ego death. You will start to have unconditional loving presence. These parts of yourself will grow. You will start to feel God or whatever you want to call it. This connection to something greater than yourself. And that's the ego death that we're all looking for. 
you are worthy of love at all times. Okay, and we're gonna talk about this more in the next video. But for now, that's what we are looking at, and I'll see you in the next video.